welcome to my Diablo 3 monk build guide for Baruch, the newest Warframe that was added to the game. This was added over the holiday break and of course the moment DE dropped him on us with Fortuna 2, they kind of went on the holiday break after a few little tweaks here and there to the actual patch itself. Completely left the Warframe alone, so we have absolutely no idea what's going to happen if it's going to get a buff, a nerf, a small tweak here or there when they come back in January. However, this is my personal build for him, this is my daily loadout, my daily build which I will use whenever I want to play Baruch, which is, you know, every now and then. I like his fourth ability. It's kind of like a, a cooler looking Excalibur, his fourth, because, you know, he's, he's got the moves, he's got Kung Fu, so. Baruch, his abilities, his one, two, and his three. Elude, lol, desolate hands, and serene storm. So elude, when you have this active, you will dodge all incoming projectiles, but only when you're not attacking. This is a toggle ability, and it has a drain, so it's channeling. So you, this ability can make use of stacking 60% efficiency from fleeting expertise, the 30% efficiency from streamline, and then using something like prime continuity to repair the loss in duration. So that way you have all your duration, well not all your duration, just under max and effective 190% efficiency. And you can bring this down to a true 75% off your energy. However, that isn't something that I would recommend doing because you, well, you're going to use, at least in this build, both of those efficiency mods maxed out, but you're not going to have maximum efficiency because we are using Blind Rage and I'll get into that in a minute. So LOL. LOL is an interesting ability. You kind of deploy it. It's a radial CC ability that will sleep enemies. The sleep is effectively a blind. You can perform finishers on these enemies when they are slept and when they wake, actually, they apparently, they, yeah, they forget about everything that happened beforehand. It says so right there. So after the little short-term amnesia, which is cool, you, you you know you knock the knowledge out of them. And as you can see here, and my lol has a radius of just over 50 meters. The duration, lol, the moment I use it, it will last just under six seconds. And enemies that wander within range can be affected. Enemies that wander out of range, I think they still maintain the effect if they were in it. And the sleep duration, when because it slow, it slows them, it slows them, it slows them, and puts them to sleep. The sleep duration, just under 24 seconds. You are ceasing enemies for 24 seconds. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Desolate hands, desolate hands. Of course, this is kind of like you spawn little daggers around you. I think they would have been caught if they were tarot cards, but whatever. You spawn these little daggers, and they give you damage reduction. It is 90. I believe that is split among each dagger. So what desolate hands does is they will go and seek out enemies, and they will hit the enemies in the hand do a small amount of damage they have a small amount of like aoe damage but it will disarm the enemy so it will force them to use their melee weapon desolate hands because it sees our enemies also has an interesting interaction with spy cameras in missions it will actually seek out spy cameras and disable them serene storm this is his exalted weapon and you can see it costs no energy and the reason is because baruch has a secondary source called restraint and that's what gets drained or at least that's what gets refilled when you use serene storm so serene storm is his exalted weapon it's kind of like a scuffed exalted blade uh, it, well it's extremely it's an extremely scuffed exalted blade in every single way but it just looks cooler. Now, the build itself, first onto the arcanes, you see we are not using primed flow, so energy could be an issue for you because, of course, there is a channeled ability. And Baruch is a very ability spam warframe. You are using his kit quite a bit. So, arcane energize is going to help me out quite a bit. If you don't have arcane energize, well, if you don't have any arcanes, of course, you could drop organ message and put in the flow mod there if you so wish. But, like I said, this is my personal build. This isn't meant to be like a build guide, like this is how you should play the warframe, this is how I play the warframe, and maybe you would consider doing this if you can. Arcane strike. More attack speed into the melee. Corrosive projection. We'll get onto his exalted weapon in a minute, but I would recommend using corrosive projection because you're going to need the armor stripping, especially against certain grenier units at like higher levels that just won't budge if you can't do anything to their armor. Cunning drift. This is just for the range, and it's actually important to have that range, especially coupled with overextended. So as you can see, our range that to 105%, and the reason for that is because 205% allows your first ability to have a 360 degree radius damage mitigation. So its first ability works in a cone, and the more range you have, the wider that cone is actually spread around the warframe itself, and I believe it goes over and under the warframe, so it's kind of like a bubble, kind of like a Nyx bubble. So having 205% range is definitely important. This also helps with his second ability, with the crowd controlling and stuff like that. 
which, you know, it's all good. Range doesn't affect his fourth ability, though. His fourth does spawn little energy like projections, kind of like Excalibur's Exalted Blade, but having more range doesn't affect those whatsoever. Prime continuity, this is to build up duration because we are losing duration from fleeting expertise. Augur Message is also to help this, and of course, max rank fleeting expertise or streamline. This will give us very good efficiency. Coupled with the duration, very good efficiency for our first ability, which is of course channeled ability. You may be wondering why is our efficiency down? Of course, blind rage. The reason we're using blind rage is because we need that extra ability strength because it's tanked by overextended, so we're balancing quite a bit out. Umbral Vitality, this is for Vitality. Umbral Intensifier, this is for ability strength. The Desert Wind, one of the most interesting melee exalted weapons because it's also the most annoying one to mod for in my opinion. So Desert Wind, no matter how you use it, doesn't benefit from healing return or life strike in any way, which is really annoying. It doesn't benefit from primed reach either. So Desert Wind is kind of like a, a sparring weapon with a new sparring stance that will shoot energy projections out to a certain range. It has really good attack speed when you mod it, and it has insane crit, but it actually has 10% status chance. It says zero here, but this is actually 10%, and so it's not viable to build us for status. The Sacrificial Steel, this is of course to boost up crit chance, and then you will notice that Blood Rush is nowhere to be seen. You can't actually put Blood Rush on it. You can't even look at the mod for some reason when you're looking at this Exalted Melee. So, Sacrificial Steel, this is to give us crit chance. Don't worry about pairing it up with Sacrificial Pressure. You'll actually lose damage by not using Prime Pressure Point. If you don't have Prime Pressure Point and you only have Normal Pressure Point, then you could go and use Sacrificial Pressure to couple it with Sacrificial Steel, but we have 94% crit chance. Prime Fever Strike with Shocking Touch, this is just to give us our well, base corrosive damage, even though we'll rarely be procking it. Prime Fury with Berserker, this is of course for the attack speed. Organ Shatter, of course for your critical damage increase. And Shattering Impact, this is basically the option mod slot. And the reason why I would say use Shattering Impact is just to, well, with Corrosive Projection, help whittle down the armor a little bit more of enemies, especially tougher Grenier unit enemies, which just don't care for Baruch. They just don't give one, they would just laugh. So. So yeah, let's get into it. And you'll notice now, above my ammo count, there's a restraint meter. That meter is full, and that's how it will be when you start the game. So your first, second, and third ability will drain the restraint meter. It's worth noting that the more full your restraint meter, right now mine's max, the more damage reduction you have. So having restraint gives you damage reduction as well. Elude. As you can see now, I'm having an epileptic fit, and every projectile that I dodge will drain the restraint meter. So if we go ahead and set the support some elite answers. And we're just going to dodge them, you can see the restraint meter is going down. One thing to note about elude is you will only completely ignore damage if you're not attacking. Any damage over time effects such as slash, fire, uh, toxin, you will still suffer those damage. Uh, you will still suffer those damages. Knockdowns, you will still suffer knockdowns as well, so if a heavy gunner walked up to me and did a little ground pound, that would knock me flat on my ass. And apparently grenades still damage you. I didn't know that one until right now. You can see now my restraint meter is completely drained and I have this weird little hand going on, so let's go showcase the second ability. Simulate. LOL! Through my radius, they get slowed, slow, 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 and now they're sleeping. Who's not sleeping? Okay, now they're sleeping. So, as said, this sleep lasts, I think it was, what, 26 seconds? When they wake up, anything that I've done beforehand, they will forget. They don't know. So, if you get detected by one of these idiots, and you put sleep on them, when they wake up, they won't remember that they detected you. So, you could use them as a, a weird off-brand spy warframe if you want, you know, if you're getting tired of using Loki. The third ability, your little seeking daggers. So, these will, of course, they'll seek out, as we've seen, and they disarm the enemy, they make him pull out whatever melee weapon they have by default. There you go, and now that should be all melee weapon strips, so now they have to chase me like a bunch of idiots. 
And the good thing about the third ability is you can just recast it and you can get your complete stock back. So I didn't know that disarmed enemies can still be tagged by your third ability and it will try to disarm them again, but of course they just drop their melee weapon and pull another one out. I guess they have an infinite supply of sheaves. Another thing to note with the third ability is, I'm not too sure if this is intended or not, but it did seem pretty consistent when I was well, checking it out, is because enemy cameras also count as enemies, the third ability will actually seek out a camera and it will destroy it. So, you know, there's that too. And whenever you're near an ally, half of whatever little daggers you have, say I've got, say you have 10 daggers out, half of them will go to your ally and they'll act exactly the same way, only for your ally instead. And of course, like I said, you can just keep recasting at will. For every enemy that you disarm, you will also lose restraint as well. So that works. Oh, and every enemy that is affected by your second ability, you also lose restraint. So, you know, his first three abilities are basically pretty good and they're for restraint draining. So, your fourth, the weapon itself. You pull out the little funky gloves and you've got your combo. So I'm using the right click melee spam combo right now. As you can see, Baruch does not care. These were level 100, just elite lancers like that. Baruch doesn't give one. At the very end of the combo, you do a little flip like that. That'll kick him away. <laughs> because, you know, ragdolls are fun. And of course, I'll uh, show the other combos when I'm here as well. So this is just your holding forward and your melee one spam. This is a good damage combo right here. Um, the issue is hell of a lot of ragdolling that's going to be happening. If you're not killing the enemy, you are sending them into the next mission. So holding backwards and attacking. There you go. This is holding forward. You can see a little funky. And this is your ground pound. Okay. There you go. This will lift them up a little bit. And your slide attack will lift them up a little bit too as well. We'll put them to sleep. Do some more restraint. The moment they get into higher levels... What the hell? I didn't even attack them. As you can see, there's your impact. You do push them around quite a bit. So this is why I hold my block button and I just spam mouse one like that. Because this pulls them in. And this effectively works against ragdolling them everywhere. And it's also a good little grouping combo. Now, the main issue with this weapon is, of course, that was Grenier, they are armored targets, but if we go to Orokin, so, well, they Corrupted Heavy Gunners. At level 100, Corrupted Heavy Gunners can prove to be quite a pain because of all that extra armor and HP they have. You're going to end up ragdolling quite a bit before you kill them. This is also why I like to use corrosive projection and shattering impact as well, just to deal with the enemy armor a little bit more, because you are putting out so much impact damage. Corpus! Go lose some restraints. One other thing as well, your Serene Storm gives you damage reduction too, because you know, why not? So Corpus enemies are dead. Baruch doesn't care for the Corpus. They will die. And fested enemies, they die just as easily because, of course, they are like the weakest enemies ever. But we'll put a healer in there just to show. But of course, disarming them does nothing, they're just gonna melee you by in general. So, yeah, try to the healer, get them out of the way, kill everything. There we go. So, yeah, Corpus and infested, Baruch can deal with them pretty easily. Rhaenyra, he can deal with them easily as well. But the bigger, tougher targets like Gunners. Even non-corrupted heavy gunners, you know, they might last a while. This is, of course, against level 100. That's my brute build. That's how I play him. That's my rundown. It's a pretty... Uh, it's a specific build. You're kind of hard-locked into the moment you do all this formering. Kind of like hard-locking the Warframe into there. But at the moment, like I said, I don't really think there's much variety to the Warframe. Not the best. Not the worst. He's definitely got some good damage mitigation and survivability to him. His fourth is okay. It's good. It's good. It's just you know, because it's not exalted blade, people apparently don't care for it. But yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it informative. If you did, leave a like, possibly subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel, of course. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.